Welcome to Creating Disney Magic with Lee Cockrell, Lessons in Leadership, Management, and Customer Service. You can create magic too. I'm your host, Jody Mayberry, and of course, I'm here with Lee Cockrell, the retired Executive Vice President of Walt Disney World. How are you doing, Lee? I'm good. I'm retired. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Some days you don't do real well at being retired. You keep yourself awfully busy. Yeah, Priscilla complained. She said, I'm always uh, wanting to do things too fast and it annoys her. So, <laughs> so, you know, that's probably a bigger problem. Well, I was just this morning reading uh, an edition of the Main Street Leader that's coming out. And you were writing an article about responsibility and authority and and what your responsibilities are around the house, but what authority you have, like, you can you you have the authority to go buy new shoes, but not a new car. You don't have the authority to clean out Priscilla's closet or change the I did that a decor. couple of times when she was out of town. That was not a good good way when she came. Is it is that how you learned you didn't have the authority to do that? Uh, yeah, <laughs> pretty clear. But, but you also mentioned that Priscilla used to remind you that you're not an executive vice president around the house. Yeah, I have authority, but I can't use it. <laughs> yes, and your mother-in-law used to, and you said you had heard it before, your mother-in-law used to tell your father-in-law, you're not an admiral around here, now wash the dishes. That's the way it is. And the sooner you learn that, the happier you're going to be. So, Yeah, I, I I, I, get that. I've been married long enough now. I'm, I'm finally getting the hint of understanding, I think. Yeah, women have better judgment. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Well, we we have a listener question this week, Lee, that has nothing to do with with authority around the house, but that was on my mind since I was just reading that article that you wrote. Mm-hmm. Before we get into the listener question, I want to mention our friends at Magical Vacation Planner. You can call them at 407 442 Two six nine four, and as we speak, they are having their annual conference where they have their their travel advisors from all over the country come to one location there in Orlando to learn. And this is the first one in years that I have not been to, but I've always been impressed at how they pour into their travel advisors, so the travel advisors can pour into customers. That's it's a great thing they do. They really go all out, and uh, it's at the Yacht Club this year, and I think they, they, I, I was just watching some of the work they were doing to get ready for it. They're, they really go all the way, so it's quite exciting for the people who come and, uh, and they have a great experience. Yeah. yeah, they do. Okay, listener question, Lee, from Roy Allison. This this one is kind of interesting. He He references an article that he read on reddit i don't know if you spend any time on reddit lee but that doesn't matter for this question and the whole idea is that somebody had said the longer i work here the more it seems like people just make it up as they go from the outside companies seem like these in impenetrable titans of business and production it's really not that way is it i feel this way as uh, the next in line to take over the business that i'm at but i hate it I feel like we're just winging it, but on the outside, we have it all put together. So that that was some comments on Reddit. Someone else went on to say that when you're young, you get to see the impact of decisions that get made. But as you, as you get older and you get more exposure to just how much risk management and uncertainty goes into decision making, the closer you get to the decision makers, the more you realize they're just navigating uncertainty even more than the rest of us. So this is the listener question. He he references those comments and says, this sounds right, but just wanted to get your thoughts on this. Surely you can create a company that has their act together at the top. So firstly, let's address that. Is is Do you feel that it's true that people at the top are, are just as uncertain as people at the bottom, only they're just, they just act like they're certain? Well, I think it uh, varies depending on who it is. I mean, I think there are these guys and gals at the top that have 
the intellectual ability and education, and they also have deep, deep uh, experience, and they've been around exposure, and that they are smart enough to uh, involve the people who work with them in the decision making to get every point of view and try not to make as many mistakes. And I think if you do that, uh, the chances that you're going to make a better decision go up pretty dramatically. Because when you're involved in a whole group of people you work with, they're going to have to give you a point of view you cannot know because you don't do the kind of work they do and you're not in that level. And so I would say, uh, really, the recipe we always talk about involve the people who do the work, ask their opinion, ask them what's the upside, the downside. And but then on the other hand, there are a lot of leaders who think they know everything and uh, they're the boss. And uh, you can be the boss. I would say just don't be bossy, <laughs> you know, be uh, use some empathy and discipline and understanding and learning and find out what's going on from the people who do the work and and the customers. What do the customers think and what are your ta what's your talent think? You know, we've always said your customers and your employees know everything. All you got to do is talk to them and let them give you their points of view. I mean, I can guarantee you the housekeeper knows more about cleaning 14 rooms than Lee Cocker will ever know in his whole life. And, uh, and the waiter knows more about food service than the chef. I guarantee you knows more about how to cook food than I do and what's important, what's not important and the talent needed. So uh, I think that's where the mistakes are made, uh, going off making decisions based on your ego or thinking you have the authority. Uh, that's where most people get in trouble. I, you know, I just, it's so simple to think about. Why not sit down with a group of people before you make a big decision and get their point of view since they're going to be the ones to have to administer it and implement it and the customers. It's really that easy, but of course, uh, we're busy and we got deadlines and people say, well, it'll take too long to do that. And, and uh, you know, Disney has a group of 50 women, I believe, that are their advisors from the guest standpoint. When they And they talk to them several times a year about things they're thinking about doing and uh, services. And uh, it's amazing what they bring to the table, uh, all these moms. And uh, Disney's uh, really gained a lot out of that of talking to the people who have it much and i you know you and i were talking earlier today a lot of the guests know more than we do about disney i know when i was at disney world they were well, guests that knew so much more than i did and cast members that knew more than i ever would know they've been there 30 years 20 years uh they know what works they know what doesn't work and so uh if you include others and ask their opinion and uh listen and uh, be open-minded uh, you don't need to know much yourself. <laughs> you can uh, make a good decision. You know, it's like anything. If I was going to make a bad decision, talk to your finance person. Is this look right? Hey, talk to your HR. Is this okay? Is this going to be a problem? Talk to the people who do the work. Talk to a few guests and you'll know. But that takes time and it takes planning. And uh, a lot of times we're making decisions too quick. We don't, you know, we just impulsive instead of taking the time to, uh, do a little research before and scout out the, uh, the the landscape and everybody can make better choices and boy going back to fix one of those things that you make a mistake in that costs you more money and more time and more you lose a lot of credibility when you keep making mistakes that you have to go back up and then a lot of egos won't people won't admit it was wrong and then they don't change it i mean there's the human brain i'm convinced is like we're never going to figure it out it it has so many impulses of the brain and your background and I'm in charge and I'm insecure. <laughs> God, you know, you know, so it's, uh, I think that's the way to do it. And so there's both. There's the people that uh, know and the people who don't know and the people who listen and find out from other people and the people who think they know everything. So make sure you're the right person. <laughs> and, and uh, trust others to also have a, an opinion because they probably know more about it than you do. So, yeah, that's how I think about it more. I didn't always think that. Always when I early in my career, I thought I knew everything. You know, I know I just not. And that's probably the most dangerous thing you can have in your life. What somebody said: once you know everything, you can't learn anything. <laughs> so, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, it is interesting, Lee. I feel like there at some now I, I, I say this with, with absolute love, but you you raised a teenager. You had a son go off and 
to college and there comes a point where a teenager realizes they know everything until eventually they realize they they don't know a whole lot but but that point and if a leader does this that's where the trouble starts that point when they they realize they know everything that's when the trouble happens and their brain is fully developed by then so they don't have any excuse <laughs> yeah that, that that's that's right so one other thing that i think about as Lee talks about this in previous episodes of creating Disney magic, Lee has talked about reflection and anticipation. If you reflect on decisions you've made, you can figure out what went right, what went wrong. If you anticipate what's coming, you can prepare for it. Lee, I, I think the reflection and anticipation, if you have a, a leader or at least a, or a leadership team that, practices this i think it removes a lot of the doubt and operating feeling like we don't really know what's going on because you've thought through it if you did it once before you've thought through it and you've already thought about what can happen and what will we do when this does happen and you got the whole team with you then they were in that they were a part of it we're going forward together and there's you don't have a bunch of people saying well nobody asked me i could have told them this i knew it wouldn't work i that's what you get. And then, and even perfect plans fall apart, but it's better to have the whole team with you when they fall apart, <laughs> knowing that they were a part of it. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's the same old story having relations with, with people, um, building this environment where they trust you because you involve them, you respect them, you listen to them. Uh, a lot of this stuff just gets so much easier. You have less resistance from people because you involved them, you ask their opinion. If you didn't even take their opinion, at least you told them why. I mean, it's a respect thing, too. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's a good subject, and uh, you can pick which one you want to be. Uh, and by being open, you know, as I told you, you know, people say, what would you do at Disney, Lee? And I said, nothing. You know, I basically just hired great people. I mean, really, 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 really great people. And they know what they're doing. And... I waited for them to come to me if they needed something. I didn't go around bothering them all the time. They know what to do. They got a budget. They We've talked about it. They know where we're trying to go. And if they need some help or my uh, position authority to try to help them get something, then they come to me. And Or if I have to be the referee between two departments fighting with each other and not getting along, okay. But generally, um, yeah, that's the best way to run your business. And I said, I didn't... I didn't do anything. I just made sure everything got done. <laughs> you know, that was my job. Get make sure it gets done. I didn't. Uh, I didn't uh, plow the field. <laughs> I sat in the rocking chair and waited for the field to get plowed. So, <laughs> well, how did you move from being the leader you said you used to be, where you knew everything, to uh, being the leader that? recognize I don't know everything, but I can get people that do, and I don't need credit for any of it. How did you make that shift? Uh, I think reflecting on different parts of my life where I made mistakes and where I was considered arrogant and where I was considered not listening and where, and understanding my own insecurities. It just, it's kind of a, maybe it happens with life as you get older and more mature and you've been through experiences and uh, you learn to listen better. You learn to ask people's opinion. Uh, that comes later, I think, for a lot of people. Uh, uh, a little uh, molding, a little maturity, a little having a few disasters in your life where you say, mm, I could, that shouldn't have happened. And it happens in your marriage too, by the way. You get better <laughs> or you live alone. <laughs> so, <laughs> and really, I mean, that's it. It's just, uh, that's why I always talk about how, valuable experience is because you get all these lessons working with different people different places different religions different backgrounds you get all this coming in so you know you have so much more in your brain to use to make decisions because you've got all this experience and exposure and you've heard about it you've done there you talk to that you've been involved in that and that's why experience is really you know college is great but experience is like the mba and the phd of life once it goes in your, once you have a rough time, you don't forget it. You might forget to what the chapter was in that book you studied in college, but you won't forget when you really screwed up. And uh, 
That's what I like experience. And, uh, and you should go out and just do things to get the experience. And that's why you were talking about Dan, you go make up, go try to make bedrooms, go try to clean all the bathrooms in a hotel for a day, go uh, out front and greet every guest coming in and get their luggage and get them to their room. See if you can even find their room because <laughs> you're the big shot, you know? And so, uh, and everybody's watching you too. And you get a lot of credibility when they know. And that was a lot of mine. They knew I knew I'd been in those jobs. I, you know, I know. But doesn't mean I could do it as well as they could, but I knew, I knew the truth about how hard jobs were and how hard different things are. And, uh, and I also knew, because I traveled for 10 years, what customers expect when they arrive, you know, and uh, I had the experience. I'd been there. I checked into hundreds of hotels. So I knew what was important, hot water, a good remote, a bed, and quickly give me my key. You know, that's it. I don't care about anything else. Maybe tomorrow I will. I might use your club or I might go do this or get a massage or go swimming. But ah, there's a moment when you arrive at a hotel, all you want is your stuff. And we'll talk about the other stuff later. And sometimes we don't get that in straight. You know, somebody's there when you're checking in telling you about the pool. And <laughs> going, I don't, it's 10 o'clock at night. I don't want the pool. I want my key. <laughs> don't talk to me anymore. So you, you kind of learn to be the customer. And then you start to see it from the customer's point of view. Yeah. Well, one what Lee referenced before when he said talking about Daniel, we were having a conversation before we were recording about his son, Daniel, when he became general manager of a hotel for the first time, because this is how Daniel leads. He, he went around and cleaned rooms with the housekeeper. And then she told him he didn't do a good job and, and then told him, you you've got to sit in the bathtub and see what it looks like. You've got to sit on the toilet and see what it looks like, because that is how a guest experiences a bathroom. And that was a let she taught him a lesson that he still tells to this day. And, and it, it is, it's so good to understand that if you're really, if you're going to be a leader, you've got to understand what your team does. So then Daniel understood how the housekeepers did it. He realized how good they were at it. And he realized how to see the experience from a guest point of view. Yeah. If you know, if you want to know if there's hot water in the hotel, turn it on and uh, sit on the toilet and look behind the door because that's where the hair accumulates from the wind and, you know, current and wind current. And there's so many little things that make sense once you've heard them. But uh, yeah. Experience. Yeah, well there we go. If you have a question or a topic you'd like Lee to cover, reach out to either one of us. You can find Lee at LeeCockrell.com. I'm at JodyMayberry.com. And we talked about the Main Street Leader. If you would like to sign up for that, it is $10 a month. That's it. You can find that at CockrellAcademy.com. Until next week, go out and create magic for others. <laughs>